Hello and welcome. I hope this microphone is working well because it's pouring rain outside. So I hope it's not catching that. Now I have a very interesting study for you guys today and it's to do with 717-888-153, the full net, pi and two moons. Okay, two moons. Now all these things have been shown to us for years and years especially the two moons you know there are a lot of um, there are, i think there are numerous videos out there that speak about people having rapture dreams with two moons in it two full moons so i just got to know something and it blew my mind so i, I thought i'd share it with you guys let me just go ahead and start the video okay so now on a basic level what is 717 okay on a, on a very basic level it is um in strong's uh, hebrew it is ara okay and that means to gather and to pluck and in strong's greek it is armageddon which is pretty interesting now i'm going to try and zoom in so hopefully you'll be able to see this mm, okay so if you note there are two occurrences both in ara this one, the Hebrew one, and the Greek one, two occurrences of 717, okay, which which is interesting because I'm going to come to that. It's connected to the two moons, right? So, now, um, for most of you who followed uh, this channel or followed the studies, uh, the biblical research and studies that I've done, you know that I had this encounter, this very divine encounter on the 21st of July, 2017. Yes, I know, years and years ago. And that changed my life. That one encounter changed my whole life, turned it around, and I dove in into biblical studies and uh, started studying Hebrew and Greek so I could read the word in its original form. Right. So all that happened started in 2017, and it started on 21st of July, 721, okay? And this encounter happened at 6 p.m. Not one second before, not one second after. 6 p.m. Okay, 6 o'clock in the evening. Right, so after that, that was in 2017. Then I was shown that 21st July 2017 plus 726 days lands us on the 17th of July 2019. Well and good. 726, as you know, is Harpazo. Okay, 717, Ara, to gather and to pluck is the rapture code. 721 is the lamb in Revelation. In the book of Revelation, when the lamb is being spoken of, the lamb in front of the throne, the the number, the Strong's number is 721. But the two moons that were shown, the two full moons, that remained a mystery, okay, for the longest time. In fact, the, I'm just getting around to understanding the mystery now. So, the first moon, of course, I thought was 17th of July, 2019, 717. And in the creation calendar, it was uh, the fifth month and 13th day, okay, on the creation, uh, Jewish creation calendar. And it happened to be a partial lunar eclipse. Now, lunar eclipses, whether partial or full, can only happen on full moon nights, okay? So, you can't have a lunar eclipse without it being a full moon, all right? So this was a full moon and it was a partial lunar eclipse. Okay, I'm going to come back to this because it's very interesting. Now, 717 and 888 in Pi, okay? Now, why do I say it's linked to the event horizon? Because Pi, the, the symbol of Pi is this, right? And it is 3.14415 and the numbers go on. It's a unending number, okay? There is no end to the number of pi, okay? What is pi? Pi is basically the the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter of a circle. So essentially, the image of pi is literally an event horizon, okay? Which is very fascinating because it is linked. These two things are very linked. And you see this. So the pi, I told you, it's unending numbers, like billions, trillions, Gazillion, okay? It's like if you see the the digits of pi 
and you can visualize from Earth, you're looking into space and there's this highway. Can you see this? This highway of numbers going out through the Milky Way, through the galaxies, through the universe, and it just goes on and on and on, okay? It's an unending number. As I said, uh, billions, trillions, gazillion digits in this pie, all right? And it has fascinated mathematicians for years and years and years, okay? For, for decades, centuries, all right? So imagine my surprise, okay? When I saw 717 and 888, and I saw pi, and I went to this um, to this pi calculator, okay? There's this pi calculator. And imagine my shock and surprise and then delight, okay? Because if you search, let's say you put in this pattern, 717, okay? To search its positions in pi. Guess what happened? The third occurrence of this pattern is at location 888. Now, I can't begin to tell you what, I mean, what are the odds for this, okay? Could zillion, I don't, I don't even know, like a gazillion to one. What are the odds for something like this? If you put in 717 in this, you know, pi digit locator, the third location, the third third location okay third location is at 888 and what is 888 888 is the gematria for jesus or jesus in greek all right now let's um <laughs> let me go back to this so you can just imagine right i mean from a maths perspective from a simple perspective 717 is all oh, together and to plug and it's the strong hebrew and and then there's armageddon okay it's all about end times fine 717 is about the end time, the end time gathering, the plucking, and then the Armageddon, right? But when you see the connection between 717 and 888 from a mathematical perspective, it just whew, blows your mind, okay? Now, around that same time, uh, in 2019, I was given this mathematical equation, which is basically the iterations of 888 to the power of 3. So Jesus in Trinity, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the power is to the power of three, right? So what do you get here? If you see this, this is eight, eight, eight. So eight to the power of three, eight to the power of three, eight to the so you get five one two plus five one two plus five one two, you get one five three six. Okay, that's then you have the first iteration, which is basically one to the power of three, five to the power of three, three to the power of three, and six to the power of three, and you get this you wind up with this number three six nine. Then you take this in the second iteration, 3 to the power of 3, 6 to the power of 3, 9 to the power of 3, and you get 972, right? Then you take 972, and the third day, 9 to the power of 3, 7 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 3, right? You get this. But on the fourth day, something incredible happens. When you take 1080 to the power of 3, you get 513, all right? Now, why is 513 like important because of revelation 513 okay i'll just take you there because i think i have that open so revelation 513 says then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever okay that's Revelation 513. Also, when um, I had looked at uh, 17th of July on the creation calendar, it was basically the fifth month and the 13th day. 13th day and it was the fifth month, okay? 17th of July fell on the fifth month, 13th day. So I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is like the pi and the 888. And it's, it's incredible that the 888, the iterations, land on 513 on 17 July is the 5th 113 day now on the 5th day when you go to the next iteration the most incredible thing happens you start seeing a repetition of the number 153 to eternity like the 6th day, 7th day, 8th day, 9th day, 10th day 115th millionth day is 153 now where do you see 153? that is the full net 
of John 21.11, right? Okay, I'm going to take you there. Right. So here it is. So Simon Peter, this is John 21.11. Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. So this is talking about a full net. But when the Bible uses a number, okay, you can be sure that there is a massive mathematical connection okay with with this number with 153 over here right and i found this extraordinary that 153 fish in the bible the full net okay the net that is lifted out of the waters has everything to do with codes that i found in the bible and this is the 153 going into eternity and at the same time at the same time if you add 513 plus 153 what do you get you get 666 513 plus 153 is 666 so which means that when the net when the 153 are taken out and up out of the water okay the waters of humanity in this case the beast kingdom the 666 comes into full power on earth okay and full power it could be anything okay it could be ai it could be anything sorry where were we it's it's cold here because it's pouring rain outside and i just got a shawl okay so now so as you can see this 153 goes for eternity right so this is basically the fifth day from the fourth day to fifth day you move into eternity right so and at the same time that the 153 are lifted out the full net not being broken the same time the beast comes into full power 666 right now okay so here uh, at the time okay in uh, 2019 i had done a bunch of studies right on john 21 okay and I had found uh, 717 coded in geometry. Okay, again, math. Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> again, math. 717 coded in geometry for John 21. Now, this has part 1 and 2. And I'll leave the link to the playlist below in the description box so you can watch this. Very interesting. Back then, I was absolutely sure that 717 had to be in 2019. Okay, before that, I also want to tell you that when this happened, okay, I was also given Genesis 119, which is what basically Genesis 119 talks about the fourth day, right? So we have and the evening and the morning were the fourth day and it was the fourth day on the equation as well on this equation, the fourth day, 513, fifth month, 13th day. I was absolutely dead sure this is, this is it. Okay but that came and went <laughs> there was a lot of backlash because nothing happened <laughs> of course i had i have a different perspective about it now all right but back then it was horrible it was awful okay that nothing happened because i was so sure about it all the maths all the pie everything just added up to that okay now fast forward five years we're in 2024 now i recently did a video on how special 2024 is because it is the power of three from the number two so if you take two to the power of three plus three to the power of three plus four to the power of three all the way to nine to the power of three and you add those numbers up you get 2024 which is pretty intense and you know very interesting now i realized it is from two to nine so the bookends are two and nine 2 and 9 is departure. How do we know that? Let me let me just take you to an article on 29. It's by a brother called Troy Brewer. I'll leave the link for this in the description box. Okay. He's in uh, Burleston, Texas. And uh, he goes into depth. All right. He even speaks about Mount Everest. Now, I live in the Himalayas, so... The Mount Everest in, is in the Himalayas, which is it's in Nepal, of course. I'm in India. Here, 29 in Hebrew is Kapteth. <coughs> Excuse me. It suddenly got very cold because of the rain. 
So 29 in Hebrew is Kaptath. All right. Where did that go? Um, and he has a list of 29 times where in the Bible it speaks of departure because 29 is departure. This letter, Kaptath, okay, this is departure. So isn't that really fascinating? Because 2024, okay, this, the year that we are in right now, the bookends are 2 and 9 to the power of 3 gives us 2024, which is extremely interesting. Okay, now here we go. So smart old me with all my math and all my, you know, uh, studies. Finally, I figured that 2024 is the fifth day. How do I say that? Because this um, equation, 888, 717, 888 and pi were given to me in 2019. So let's say 888 to the power of 3 is 2019. Okay, this 1536. That is 2019. That's the zero point, right? The first day or the first iteration then becomes 2020. The second day becomes 2021. The third day becomes 2022. Fourth day, 2023. And fifth day we have when the full net when you know the equation totally changes and becomes an eternity an eternal <coughs> i'm so sorry I'll, I'll try and edit this out but if i can't and if i want to get this too early please excuse this thing in my throat so the fifth day is 2024 do you see that and also 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24 2024 itself like 2 plus 2 plus 4 is 8 all right so all this is happening and i'm getting um i'm getting hopeful again after five years right but still i couldn't understand this two moons the two full moons and then rapture i could not understand it it remained a mystery now let me show you something very uh, interesting. Oh, and this is the fifth day. What? Now the fifth day is coded throughout. From Genesis to Revelation. There are rapture codes that I found. I've done, I've shared studies on the rapture codes I found in Genesis 5. Okay, that's coded in Gi uh, Genesis. That's in a video here. A divine chiastic structure. Now I'll leave the link to the playlist. You can go and check these videos. Okay, but basically what did I find in that? I found that if you do the worst skips, age at paternity, worst skips, lifespan of, this is the patriarchs, okay, the, the first 10 generations in the line of Adam. And you get this message, okay, Galal, Yodhe Vavhe, Ketis, Yodhe Vavhe, Tankum, Odem, which is basically to flow down my unconditional love and harvest with unconditional love and comfort my precious stones isn't that amazing i'm sorry i don't know why there's so many interruptions first it gets cold and i'm coughing and it's, it's like something stopping me from doing this video but we shall soldier on shan't we we should soldier on so this uh code that i found in genesis 5 which is basically the first 10 generations right uh in the line of the messiah to flow down my unconditional love and harvest with unconditional love and comfort my precious stones. Now, precious stones, this odem, this word odem, okay. Where do we see precious stones? Where do we see God talking about precious stones? So that is in Malachi. Malachi 3, 16 to 17. Now, what does 3, 16 says? Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord listened and heard them. He listened. He heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. So just as we find the Lord precious, he finds us equally precious, if not more. And Malachi 3.17, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. This is God speaking. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. So basically this, this word jewels in Hebrew, this means wealth, the greatest treasure. Like your 
your the treasure you treasure the most basically okay so it's jewels it's wealth it's treasure it's prized possessions okay that's what this word means now if you saw if you see the code to flow down my unconditional love and harvest with unconditional love and comfort my precious stones so you can see the connection this is coded in genesis 5 and it is visibly spoken in malachi 317 then we found rapture codes in lamentations 5 okay this is again chapter 5 everything is 5 so the 50 is extremely extremely important because everything is mathematically coded okay within the bible itself because hebrew is a alphanumeric language every letter has numbers every word has a certain um, number to it okay every letter every word it's a multi-dimensional language right so now there's another video where i've shared this message now this is a fairly long message because there are 22 verses in this all right and this is how it reads the the coded message in lamentations chapter 5 with jeremiah who was a linguistic engineer i would say he hid this in lamentations chapter 5 we found it okay thousands of years later now it reads to remember the inheritance of the orphans dividing the waters above and looking down upon egypt this world egypt is a euphemism for this world abba the father and the servant of servants who is the servant of servants yeshua will take the souls who are naked and clothe them to be his bride now if you go to the study okay you will find uh, uh, it's on excel sheets you'll find the detailed uh, it actually means his two his two brides this year to be his nashim his two brides so that's the church and israel the Prince of Peace, the Chosen One, and the Ancient Elders will finally rest. He will cause a deep sleep or a darkness and move over the face of the waters, which is again a euphemism for humanity. God will divide the waters which were from under the firmament from the waters above the firmament. Why? For you remain naked from the sin of the tree. To see if he would call. Like there are people still sitting on the fence, right? who, uh, you know, can't make up their minds about God. Unto dust shalt thou return. So, those who are still sitting on the fence, wondering if there is a God, although the, the revelation of God is all around them, in every sunrise, every sunset, in every little flower, every little bee, okay? But still, okay, I'm not going to go in. That's another rabbit hole. And the top scientists of the world, even Einstein said there's so much detail. The more you go into science, the more you realize there has to be a designer. There has to be a God. Okay, so for you remain naked from the sin of the tree to see if he would call. You're sitting on the fence. And unto dust shall thou return. For God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Okay, this is just beautiful. This code in Lamentations. Jeremiah was absolutely amazing. All right, so now I started looking at 2024, fifth day and all, and I started looking at Sukkot. Why, why didn't I look at July? Because I was like, look, we've done studies on the sequence of messianic events, all right, based on the menorah. And this again is extremely interesting. Let me see if I can just bring this forward. So when I did the study, Astonishing Menorah Revelation, again, go and go back and uh, watch this whole video because this is, t I'm just giving you brief, you know, brief sort of uh, overviews on this. So if you take the menorah and you superimpose the festivals, um, what do you get? Okay, wait, I think my door is about to open. <laughs> I'm going to go shut that quick, real quick. You know, it's almost as though someone doesn't want me to do this video. I've never had so many interruptions in any video, okay, before this. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's very stormy weather outside and the door, you know, the curtains kept moving and the door wanted to open by itself. Spooky. Okay, let's move on in the name of the Lord. In Yeshua's name. Our Savior's name. Okay. And if the Lord wills, we will complete this video. So over here, 
getting back to the menorah so you have this pillar of god right that's going up and you have the three branches right uh so if you superimpose the festivals you have passover unleavened bread fresh um first fruits and pentecost right now passover unleavened bread and first fruits were fulfilled by the lord when he came on his you know first the first time he uh, incarnated on earth he fulfilled passover unleavened bread first fruits and then when he resurrected and he ascended uh on pentecost on pentecost the holy spirit was sent down to believers right now this these three pillars are called the pillars of severity and these three pillars okay on this side are called the pillars of mercy because you see jesus has taken all that severity and that great um the wrath the severity he took it upon himself the guilt the sin everything right and he ascended now we are left with the pillars of mercy okay which is the end time i believe these events will come in the end time but i also believe that they will be fulfilled like everything moves towards god there's nothing that moves away from all of creation is moaning and groaning everything is moving towards god so this was um let me see if i can uh increase the sum oh hang on magnify it yeah zoom in sorry <laughs> what so this is this happened in this order right 1 2 3 so you had passover then unleavened bread then first fruits and then pentecost but when it comes to the end times the sequence of events i will be i believe will be towards the pillar of god this is something i was shown years and years ago okay so the first uh, the first thing to be fulfilled the first modem or festival to be fulfilled will be sukkot then yom kippur and then trumpets because trumpets is basically armageddon it's the end of it all sukkot is what it's tabernacles so there's the rapture and you tabernacle with god for 7 years because sukkot is a 7 day festival which is a shadow of what happens when the believers are who are not appointed to wrath the believers are not appointed to wrath they are taken out okay and hidden and for 7 years there's tribulation on earth i believe that is what sukkot signifies then you have the atonement which i believe is for israel when jesus comes back and atones for israel and then there's finally the armageddon trumpets because the trumpets the 100 blaring trumpets that is a cry of war that is a toll cry of war and then everything comes back and merges into god right so i was looking at sukkot for that reason because i believe from my menorah study uh which is called yeah uh hmm. it's called the astonishing menorah revelation the sequence of messianic events all right so uh the link to the playlist is down there uh, in the description box and you can go and click and watch this whole thing very interesting so what do i find let's reduce this we don't want my face to be a, to be covering the study so i found that i when i went and looked at calendars okay as usual i know a lot of you do this too and get confused too the jewish calendars the civil the sacred creation calendar and the enochian calendars all had different dates for sukkot like all of them multiple calendars multiple dates and times for sukkot So you have one uh, calendar saying Sukkot is in October, okay, 16 October to 23rd October. As I said, it's a one-week festival, and there's other calendars, the creation calendars that says it's in September. So there's a lot of confusion, and there's an Enochian calendar that gives a completely different date. So <laughs> I thought to myself, they can mess with dates, they can mess with calendars, but what is only in God's hands? The sun. the moon and the eclipses are the signs given directly by god to us do you agree with that because i find that that is the most interesting part about having the holy spirit it will guide you the holy spirit he guides you into looking at the right looking towards the right things So what is entirely in God's hand? What no pope can mess with, no minister, no government, no religious, uh, you know, no no religious Sanhedrin can mess with. And what is that? The sun, moon, and the eclipses. So happily, uh, 
I was going through Genesis one more time and I found uh, if you read Genesis 1 chapter 1 14 to 19 what does it say it says and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good now when I looked into the um, you know um, let me go back into linear Bible I found uh, that this uh, word for uh, seasons is Moedim okay now what is Moedim? Moedim means appointed times I have it open somewhere hang on let me get that for you right so Moedim is a Hebrew word that means appointed times okay it also means festive seasons but appointed times appointed times for what Moedim actually means the appointed time for you to meet with God for you to put aside your time and your life for you to actually meet with God that is Moedim which is an extremely interesting word and it has this uh, deeper inner meaning this is our appointment with God it's your appointment with God which is extremely interesting right so looking at all this and looking at this Moedim I thought to myself okay let's go further and guess what I found guess what I found guys guess what I found so I started looking for the Moedim, I started looking for signs in the sun and the moon and the, you know, stars and what shows up? The second 717 moon that is on 17th of September and it's the eve of Sukkot on the creation calendar like you can't make this stuff up guys it's just, and it's a partial lunar eclipse just as 17th of July was a partial lunar eclipse so you have 17th of September which is the Eve, Erev Sukkot it's called, the Eve of Sukkot and this is also the day right before Sukkot starts. Now I, I told you that Sukkot and all these festivals are shadows of the real things that are about to happen. So what happens at Sukkot? It's tabernacles. You tabernacle with God. The 153 fish are lifted out and for seven days the seven year tribulation begins because we are not appointed to wrath okay so I found the second 717 moon now you're gonna say Pearl it's September what are you talking how is it 717 and I'm gonna show you something which is equally interesting the seventh month of the year is from the word septem okay a Latin word meaning seven so before the Pope decided to go and change all the I think who was it Pope Gregory he went and changed all the calendars removed 14 days just to you know sort of they were looking at the solar system and all that and they decided that they were 14 days off so whatever the reasons may be okay um, the calendars were changed but September means 7 so 17 September is 717 <laughs> okay so that's what I've written here right the two moons partial both partial lunar eclipses five years apart both on 717 now you tell me what is the okay and there's something far more interesting hang on let me make this smaller okay now if you look at this I decided to go and look at these time units okay so I plotted in uh, 17 July 2019 to 17 September 2024 what do I get? I get exactly 270 weeks, 270, okay, 270 weeks. So I said, okay, that's interesting. Let's take a look at what it means. This is what it means. Strong's Greek 270 is to reap as in harvest. Strong's Hebrew 270 is to grasp and take hold with the idea of holding in possession, like great treasure, like wealth, like precious stones. I kid you not brothers and sisters Strong's Greek is to reap to harvest okay and 
and the Greek 270 is to, har to reap and harvest and Hebrew 270 is to grasp, take hold like precious stones, like Malachi 317, like the code in Genesis 5. It's mind-blowing, yeah, absolutely mind-blowing. All right, so now my question to you is, let me increase this so you can actually see my face and look into my eyes. Right, the question is this. This ticks all the boxes, right? So you have the two moons, the two full moons, because eclipses, partial or total, can only happen on a full moon, right? So you have 717 is ticked, okay? You have 888. I just explained the whole 2024, the whole pie and everything to you. 888 is ticked. Two moons, this is the second moon. With the sign of God, the eclipse, with the seven winds, with the seven one seven, I showed you about you know how this year actually has bookends of two and nine to the power of three. Departure two nine is departure, and then of course it's Sukkot, it's Erev Sukkot, the day before Sukkot, which is which is mind blowing that the eclipse is happening a day before Sukkot. And you know, do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know. There were some sisters long back. I've forgotten their names. I can't remember their channels. But one sister, I think her name was Colleen. She said that God told her, and she heard this very audibly, and she knew it was him speaking, that he would be coming in a lul. So if that sister is watching, or if anyone knows her, her name is Colleen something with Mantir Min. I, I can't remember okay anyway lovely lovely lady lives in Australia somewhere and she was told by the father that he would be coming in a lul so a sister mine let me show you this if you go on to this this converter date it gives you different calendars different uh, you know and if you go to September 17 2024 look what the Hebrew date is Elul 14 the 14th of Elul and I've always said this always looks like 717 X marks the spot to me the month of Elul this is how it's written doesn't it look like that 717 X marks the spot this is actually LF and <laughs> you know Lamech and all but from a you know layman's perspective it totally looks like 717 X marks the spot and Elul 14 two moons second moon Elul 14 isn't that incredible? I mean, how many boxes do we need to check off? Also, do you remember there was a sister? I remember her name, Diana Oliveri. Lovely, lovely lady. Now, she was told that the 7th will be the 8th and the 8th will be the 7th. Now, it was not given to her whether it was a month or a date or whatever. But if you look at this Sukkot, the Jewish civil calendar shows the month of Sukkot okay, in October. Octo is 8, just as September, or, uh, you know, September is for 7, Octo is 8. So they're having Sukkot in the 8th month, okay, which is o October. And the creation calendar, and I believe one of the Enochian calendars is showing it in the 7th month, which is September. I'm not talking about Tishri, okay. It has to be, see, Sukkot has to be in Tishri, okay. But where they place Tishri is another question. So... So she was told 7th, 8th is 7th, and 7th is 8th. So this ticks off that checkbox too. It's pretty amazing. That's why I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, you'll say, yeah, I'm like really tired. I don't know. It's been years and years. Tell me about it. Guys, I've been doing this since 2017. Give me a break. 2017. That's seven years reading watching studying how many codes how much of studying how much studying going deep into hebrew into greek just so i can find the codes for me and you and share it right but you know it's possible this day can come and go and matthew 24 43 says what but know this that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up so supposing it comes and goes, don't lose hope because I'll tell you, it could be for our safety 
supposing who is the goodman of the house who is the master of this house this earth this egypt it is the prince of the power of the air it's satan it's the adversary the ruler of this kingdom the the prince of this world right as jesus calls him and if he comes to know and he tries his own i don't know what trickery he'll be up to probably get all his demons to surround the earth so that we can't be taken out of here whatever he does okay i don't want to get into that but this is essential that's why i don't even you know i unlist most of my videos after i make them because i don't want them the ones that are not, that are listed go into 60 70000 views the ones that are unlisted stay you know in our circle because otherwise you have all kinds of youtube recommending your videos to all kinds of people anyone believer non believer anyone will get to watch and these are hidden secrets in the bible these are hidden codes and they should be shared with children of the light so yes i i believe uh, i wanted to share this with you too okay so what do we have here we've got first thessalonians 5 but of the times and seasons brethren you have no need that i write unto you for you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night why because of what i just showed you because you don't want the prince of the power of the air to know and to try and stop it right he will come as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape they shall not escape that this is the most important verse verse 4 but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief what does that mean listen to it carefully but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief you will come to know you'll get a hint at least of the time frame right now then he goes on to say ye ye are all the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation for god has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ this again so verse 4 and 9 is very important for us as believers all the verses are but this stands out to me you know the verse 4 but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief so we will get hints now i do believe that the hints are all given to us and given to several people like i had the 717888 pipe piece of the puzzle the two moons somebody else had then somebody else had different you know um like the 7 is 8 8 is 7 so many things i mean it may not be now but here again there's something i was reading recently and i thought i'd share with you oh before i do that first thessalonians 5 um for the you know um just just read through the whole thing because it's so beautiful and it uh speaks of You know, let's just read a little more because I love I love all of Paul's epistles. Okay? So this is talking about the church elders, right? That we need to respect and uh, love them. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. but ever follow that which is good both among your both among yourselves and to all men rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks in everything good bad in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesyings prove all things hold fast to that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil now this is very interesting because it's not just abstain from evil but even the appearance of evil like to have nothing to do with anything evil nothing 
as in speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, just, you know, let it just, because, you know, even if there are, um, there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on, I know, I have personally uh, experienced it, a lot of it, especially over the last five years, especially after 717 came and went in 2019, I've experienced evil from my own brothers and sisters in Christ, but that's okay, as Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, so, abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that calleth you and also will do it brethren pray for us and yes I'll pray for you you pray for me too because that's really really important greet all the brethren with a holy kiss okay <laughs> Holy kisses. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now, isn't that so beautiful? So here, here again, I mean, I did read out 4 and 9. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should look, live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So lovely. And uh, I wanted to share something else which I found really funny, okay? It reminded me of us, you and me, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's this, okay? Okay, I've lost my cursor. I don't know where that went. This is in paint. Oh, yeah, here yeah, it is. Okay, so I am going to zoom in a bit. So yeah, did you see this person here sitting on top of the mountain? Robed and ready. Eager for Jesus' return, Christians have donned white robes and pushed themselves on hilltops several times throughout history <laughs> at the bad advice of end time specialists. Okay, I am not one of them, am I? Okay, probably am, but okay. But first on record to catch the end time fever is a small congregation of Greeks in the city of Thessalonica. Now Thessalonica had people going up and sitting on mountains wearing white robes and going and sitting on mountains <laughs> which I found really really hilarious and they also stopped working. For some reason they thought uh, you know Jesus is coming back so why should I work like you know um, so Paul tells them okay uh, wait let me I don't know how to work this. I can't even see the cursor of this thing. Okay, so let me try Let me try this again, okay? Let me bring the cursor down and try it again because I can't see it at all. Okay, it's gone up. Now it's come down. And here we are. So basically what happened in Thessalonica and uh, two Thessalonians uh, talks about it. So Bible experts offer two main uh, two main theories. Why some of the people have stopped working? They stopped working. Okay, they just stopped working because theory number one: Jesus is coming soon. Perhaps they didn't see the point of working. Why work for money when the end is near? You can't take it with you. Some Christians who stopped working may have actually considered themselves spiritually superior to others they after all had the faith to believe that jesus was coming soon and that in the meantime god would take care of them <laughs> which is fine but you can't be a lazy jit right i mean these, these were people living off other people's money and other people's you know welfare um basically okay this is really bad i can't even see the cursor oh boy so this also gives a very interesting um Okay, I found the cursor finally, which is a good thing. Now, I wanted to show you this. Uh, so, this basically tells us that Paul gets really blunt, okay? He's like shouting at these people. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat over here. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 <laughs> Paul gave them a good example to follow as an apostle and a full-time minister. He could have taken up an offering or at least asked for free food, but while he was with them, he paid his own way. All right. Uh, 
he also worked with his hands, presumably at his family trade. He was a tent maker. Now we go up again, which is so interesting. Imagine being an apostle, not like the fat cats in the... Anyway, I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> I was going to say Vatican, then I said no. Okay, so estimated uh, 100,000 people in the port city of Thessalonica. There was, certainly, there was certainly a market for tents and tent repair. So, Paul was working at making tents, okay. Now, when I, uh, this is actually very interesting for me because I fall into the category of uh, this person right here, which I'm having trouble zooming in on. Okay, why not just uh, zoom out? That would be easier. Yeah, so I, I think, I think I fall into the category. I have, I haven't actually donned white robes and gone and sat on any mountain. Okay, I, I live in the mountains, but I haven't done this. <laughs> but since 2017, since those visions, I was so sure that he'll be back within within weeks, if not then months. Friends, it's been seven years. <laughs> now, if I had stopped working, and I, for me, I gave up. I, I used to be a detective uh, fiction writer, right? I love mysteries and I used to write mysteries and good ones. And I'm good at it. And they were all bestsellers. And then I, this 2017 thing happened. I met Jesus and I, I just, I was like, no, he's coming back. I need to tell the world. I need to dive into the word. I need to learn Hebrew. I need to learn Greek. I need to do studies. I need to share them. I did all of that and I forgot about my writing for so many years. And then what do I know? It's like naturally if you're not like working, what happens? Your savings will run out eventually. Okay. No matter how, how many bestsellers you've written, written, your savings will run out eventually. And I started getting back into writing from I think 2023 onwards because it was like crazy I'm like it's been seven years like see the point I'm trying to make here is that we are not toddlers we are responsible for our, for our own mental health if we stop working thinking Jesus is coming back if we stop living our lives we stop taking care of our homes our families or even our neighbors we stop all that what happens it's it's like you become depressed and you become broke if you're broke and depressed look at your own life and look at what you're not doing and get back to work get creative jesus if jesus will come when he will come see in heaven it could be two minutes and it'll be two years on earth so it's not his fault if you're broke and depressed it is my fault that i'm if i'm broken depressed it's my fault so you can wait for the Lord, but you can also be artistic, you can be creative, you can smile at your neighbors, you can help people. And you know, someone told me, it was one of the, uh, one of my teachers who told me that whenever you're depressed, go out and do something for someone else. And that depression will go away. And it has worked for me every time. So I'm just, you know, I'm not a mental health professional. Please don't take my advice to be like the final thing. But I know from experience that when you go out and help others and you go out and even smile at others or you know make somebody else's life a little better maybe you can give a little financially maybe you can you know give someone books maybe you can just spend time with people and talk to people and you will feel better you will because you helped others that goodness will come back to you it's just one of those things I don't want to be preachy out here but well in second thessalonians this obsession of the second coming in fact this chapter says that right obsession the second coming don't go and wear white robes and sit on a mountain wait for him to come okay he will come when he will come he'll come in his good time i'm just sharing all this why did i share all this with you because i feel that these are important signs that we need to watch we need to keep a lookout and these are all very interesting signs for all of this maths for all of this to come together again and the two moons it's extremely interesting 
and this whole thing you know it's 270 weeks between these two if you include the if you include this day and this day it's exactly 270 weeks it's something to watch but don't stop working because you're expecting him to come i did that for a, for a few years then i started working again in 2023 don't stop working don't stop your life because you will end up broke and depressed if you do that and god does not want jesus does not want that for you he wants you to be to live the best life now he wants you to help others to be a beacon of light and joy so that people looking at you will not say oh my god i don't want to be a christian because that person is always broke and depressed and they're a christian no they should look at you and say this person is full of light full of love full of joy i want what they have and if they're a christian i want to be a christian so that is the whole point be happy rejoice like you know that's what it says right what does it say here rejoice evermore it doesn't say go around look you know with a sad face and looking depressed and broken oh and this is you know, there used to be a person i knew back in my days in baghdad when you'd ask dr alia you'd be like so how are you today how how are you doing and she'd be like oh the moment you ask her she'll go into this long drawn thing about how badly everything is going going for her how how sad she is how depressed she is how broke she is how and this was an educated woman she was a doctor so it's not about that it's about be the best you can be right now take care of your home take care of your kids take care of your pets take care of your husband take care of your spouse take it take care of your you know family and live a good life he will come jesus will come when he comes okay do not stop living your life and do not put all your hopes on one day or one date no matter how many indications there are that that could be the day okay don't do that so paul made tense and i write detective fiction so this is i'm not just telling you for the sake of telling you i actually am a detective fiction writer okay and someone messaged me i won't i won't i won't tell your name okay someone messaged me on facebook saying that uh, hey pearl your talent is wasted on this sort of fiction you should only be doing bible codes and i said yeah right and i presume you're going to pay my bills <laughs> because i do bible codes and this youtube thing completely for free okay but detective fiction is what pays my bills and my husband of course <laughs> <coughs> sorry so here's a new series that was that was the series uh, the one that i showed you earlier this series i wrote from 2013 to 2017 and then i met jesus and stopped writing and then i've started a new series now and this is the new series these are short stories because people's attention spans are so i mean short stories means they are 10000 words so they are big bigger than a short story as you would think of it but they're mystery they're detective i love mysteries i love as you know uh, writing and reading detective fiction so yeah okay so i'm gonna say bye now and uh, i hope you were blessed with this video or oh, in case you like mystery stories then uh, these were all bestsellers and they they're still bringing in good revenue so if you like mystery stories set in the historical times, 1930s, 1940s, the 1940s, go and uh, pick up these. Very interesting. I'll leave the link below. Or oh, it's there, I think, on my YouTube page, my Amazon uh, author link. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm pretty blown away with all of this. Okay, the two moons especially. Tell me what you think. And while I'm not hanging my hat on this i do think it there's a possibility that this could be it but do not put all your eggs in one basket and hope this is it because i did that for 717 in 2019 and i've learned my lesson since i think i needed to learn my lessons it's full of arrogance and uh, when i look at some of my videos from them i'm like no that no like why you <laughs> so much arrogance that oh yes i know everything and i it came and went and i got brick bats after that <laughs> big fat brick bats <laughs> which is kind of funny 
but this is interesting and i know i know 717 is from the lord i know 888 was from the lord i know all of this is there the two moons are from the lord and the fact that the only thing that these sanhedrins and all cannot mess with are eclipses the moedim they cannot mess with that so i'm just going with this the fact that the date happens to match 717 is very interesting to me okay so what i'm going to do is say bye god bless you and stay blessed and happy fourth for all of you all the friends and you know everyone uh, friends and family in the, the us happy fourth to you guys and i hope you enjoyed this study do share it with those children of the light not of the darkness because we don't want that matthew you know what i just read out to you that the, the prince of the power of there to you know bust up this whole date and operation <laughs> for the good side right so share it with other children of the light if you feel led to do that all right so god bless you stay happy stay blessed do not be sad and broken depressed that is not who you are start working again start uh, you know sharing your life with others and things will improve praying is very important but i found even when i was broken depressed and praying <laughs> when i wasn't doing taking the action you know making the changes in my own life i was still break broken depressed and praying <laughs> now it feels a lot better now i feel better i feel better about my studies i feel better about everything now so i just wanted to share that with you please don't uh, you know be well i think i'm just repeating myself so i'll say bye god bless you stay happy stay blessed be a light to the world when people look at your joy and your happiness they'll want to be they'll want to come to jesus because they see that and they'll they'll want to come to jesus through you right so goodbye and god bless